Hello and welcome to the Education USA Canada Summer Sessions Showcase. My name is Jenica Heim and I'm your Education USA advisor. Education USA is a US Department of State network of over 400 international student advising centers in more than 170 countries. The network promotes US higher education to students around the world by offering accurate, comprehensive, and current information about opportunities to study at accredited post secondary institutions in the United States. To learn more about the Education USA network, you can visit educationusa.state.gov. Education USA in Canada is located in Ottawa, and I am your advisor. I help students from all across the country with free advising services, including one-on-one -on -one advising, webinars like this one, and boot camps. Um, so someone's asking, do you know what the SAT boot camp is about? I do. I will be hosting a boot camp next week. And um, throughout the session today, you will see pop-ups. So I'll go ahead and send you your first pop-up. So this is how you can register for the SAT bootcamp. You can click on register today to learn more, or you can click in the upper right-hand corner, there's a little X, and if you click on that, um, you will disappear the pop-up. So the SAT bootcamp is about the SAT exam, which is a standardized test that is um, required usually required for many universities in the United States. It's not required for summer sessions, however, so that's not something you need to worry about for today's presenters, um, but more something for general admissions in the United States. Uh, beyond that, I have a robust presence on social media. If you want to follow and learn more about what we're doing, upcoming events, all sorts of great stuff. Uh, the one that I'm most active on is Instagram. You can see, um, student spotlights, university spotlights, learn about upcoming events, all sorts of great stuff. So there's the information to follow on Instagram. If you have any more questions, you can always email me or check out our Canada specific website at educationusacanada.ca. This is what today's agenda looks like. We have six amazing universities who are going to tell us about their summer programming for both pre-college and uh, university students. I'm going to start by telling you a little bit more about what uh, summer sessions are about and why they're why they can be a really good idea. I will tell you also about two other programs um, that you can consider for this upcoming summer. So why summer sessions? There's uh, two main groups of students that you will hear about today, pre-college students or uh, currently enrolled university students. So a pre-college student, um, college is a word used in the United States to kind of mean any post-secondary. So if you're in high school or CEGEP, someone who's never um, entered into a university before, you are a pre-college student. And sometimes pre-college is a specific age range. It could, it could be 15 to 17, 15 to 18, it varies school to school. So for pre-college, what, why take summer sessions? What's the advantage? Well, you can enhance your academics and your academics um, that, especially ones that you're interested in, like if you have a particular subject matter, you can network with other students who have that similar interest and also learn from faculty, high level faculty in that area. You can become more familiar with post-secondary coursework. Um, and so this will really take you to that next level in some of the areas you're excited about. And um, it will allow you to become more familiar with the specific university that you might be interested in. And you might also get a course credit, which is really cool. Um, and you would be able to take with you uh, once you go into university. If you're already enrolled as a bachelor's uh, student or, or a master's student, you can also take advantage of summer sessions. Uh, just like for pre-college, it can enhance your academics and provide those same networking opportunities, um, but at your level, right? So the pre-college students communicate with the other pre-college students typically, and, and the uh, ones in university will be in their own cohort. And you'll learn more about that from the various institutions. Uh, beyond that, you can also get ahead or catch up with your coursework. So if you have uh, fallen behind for any reason, uh, you can use summer to catch up or you can use it to get ahead to uh, potentially even graduate early. 
And by enrolling in summer sessions at a different university, you can get new perspectives in your field, which is a really great advantage. And you should, um, if you're trying to, you know, catch up or get ahead, you can use, um, you can get transferable credits so that they, you can use them towards graduation in your current university. Education USA uh, is has a program that's typically called Education USA Academy, and this summer as a digital program will be called Education USA Connects. So I'm just gonna give you a little bit of details about that program. It's three to six weeks. It's a virtual summer academic program. There are seven participating institutions for 2021. Um, it The cost is between $250 and $450, depending on the institution. It's an immersive English experience. So each program requires a student to have at least an intermediate um, English language level, which I know for most Canadians um, is something that is um, that you would have. The programming focuses on application and college prep content and virtual campus visits. There's a focus on U.S. higher education. So the goal of the program is really like to bring together students who are planning to apply to the U.S. or think they might. And there's a lot of focus on supporting students through that process process and, and allowing students to really meet each other and have intercultural engagement. So those who can apply for Education USA Connect, this is a, a program that's focused on uh, 15 to 17 year olds who live outside of the United States, so international high school students. Um, as I mentioned, you have to have at least an intermediate English level and have, be interested in the US study. It is self-funded, and there's a reason there's an asterisk as some schools have some scholarship opportunities, and the reason there's an asterisk by 15 to 17 is I think a couple of the schools um, allow you to apply up to 18 years old. How do you apply? Well, there's a website in the lower right-hand corner, educationusaacademy.org, and I can also pull up a pop-up promise to give a lot of these today. There we go. So you can learn more by clicking on uh, the button there. The application requirements are uh, an online application, recommendation letters, and a language assessment. Um, if your native language is English, um, I'm, I'm pretty sure you can have the, um, you wouldn't need to take a TOEFL, but instead have some other proof of language ability uh, from your high school. These are the partner institutions that are part of this summer's Education USA Connects program. As you can see, it's a wide range of institutions from across the United States, and their themes uh, vary. Um, leadership, <laughs> California Dreamin', uh, and U.S. higher education. You can see a lot focus on U.S. higher education, personal statements, and creating a successful application. And um, Embry-Riddle is a, an aeronautic university, and so they also have an aviation theme. If you want to learn more, so in this platform, there's a handout section. So if you look above the chat, there's information that says handouts. And we're going to be including a lot of different information in that section throughout the program. So if you click in there, you can find um, a more robust document with this exact same information on it. it just has and it has more um, for each of the programs, including, I believe it might have links to each one. If it doesn't, you just go to the edu and usaacademy.org, and you can click on each institution to learn more about their programs. Um, you can see here's the cost and how that varies, as well as the dates. For the ones that have two date ranges, they have two sessions, so you wouldn't do both of them. You would pick one or the other. The cool thing about these different programs is, like I mentioned, they're between three and six weeks. So if you have other summer sessions or summer opportunities that you're considering, you could probably squeeze this in with, with other things that you'll be working on. On the spreadsheet in the handout section, you will also find the days of the week that the sessions will be run. So that's the information about Education USA Connects. If you have more questions about it after I'm done speaking, you can feel free to use the private chat section to ask me more questions. Um, you can also use the Q&A chat. And I can see people have already started to put questions in there. So you can see in the, in the, in the chat area, um, if, you have, if you have questions, using Q&A or private chat are the best ways to, to do that.
and I will address those soon. Uh, the next program I want to talk about is the Youth Ambassadors Program. So the Youth Ambassadors Program, um, the original deadline was yesterday, so I, I didn't think I was going to get to talk about it today. But I do get to talk about it today, which is very exciting. So the Youth Ambassadors Program is now open for two more weeks. So if you um, are not familiar with the program, well, I am going to help you become familiar. And do feel free to ask questions. I know a lot about the Youth Ambassadors Program. Happy to help. If anybody started an application and has a question, you can ask it now. The Youth Ambassadors Program is uh, a selective program, and it's fully funded for the students and adult mentors who are selected. That means it's, it's a scholarship. There's no cost to attend. Um, we select 18 youth participants and two adult mentors to participate. It is an eight week summer program. It's a virtual program. And over those eight weeks, you will have about six to eight hours per week of engagement through either live or asynchronous um, programming. So asynchronous, which was a word you'll probably come, become quite familiar with this year. Asynchronous means that um, you will have some recorded modules that you will watch during the week. And then there's also going to be live uh, panel discussions from, uh, from experts in their field and um, a lot of information about US-Canada relations. Um, the goals of the program are leadership development, community service, and civic engagement. So a lot of the speakers and topics will be people either in public service or in community service in some way, uh, folks who work in the nonprofit sector, um, just giving you a lot of information about leadership, community service, and civic engagement. So those are really the three main topics. And the main focus of those eight weeks is for you to develop a community service project and um, to have that come into fruition at the end of the uh, program and during the next school year afterwards. So who's eligible? Um, for the youth participants, you must be a Canadian citizen between 15 and 18 years old and have at least four months of high school or CEGEP remaining after the summer. So what that means is, unfortunately, if you're graduating this year uh, from your institution, you are not eligible. The reason for that is because the community service pro project Part of that is getting your school to sign off and support you with your community service project. So that's part of the application process. So it's really important that you are returning to your school in the fall because you've already built a network of administrators who are, are planning to help you um, through that project. And so it's really important that you are in grades nine through 11, unless you're in Quebec, you're in grade, uh, you're in secondaire uh, uh, trois or quatre, or in your first year of CEGEP. For adults, you need to be at least 18 years old and exp have experienced mentoring youth. There's a few other things um, on the website that are outlined for our adult mentors. And so just take a look at that information if you're interested. And like I said, do feel free to ask me any questions that you have. To apply, um, you can see the website there. But of course, I am going to throw another pop up your way. So here's another pop up. Um, for those who've just joined, uh, apply today, uh, you can click there, or you can just, in the upper right-hand corner, you can click the X, and then that will get the, that will move the pop-up. Um, so as far as on the website, it says uh, different uh, preferences for different students. Um, the reason that it has that information is just to say that the goal of the program is um, to have students who maybe have less familiarity with the United States. Um, so there's, there's an opportunity for students to learn more about the US, um, which is why students who are like dual American citizens are, are not eligible to apply, unfortunately. Um, and we really just want a robust um, range of students who come from different kinds of diverse backgrounds. And that includes um, across different provinces, from different, um, uh, ethnic backgrounds and um, Wendy mentioned uh, newcomers in Canada so people 
that so that's also a group um, that we encourage to apply. So we really just want students from across all different kinds of backgrounds um, so that that the students who are selected represent how um, diverse Canada is. Yeah, and so also a preference for students who have little experience with the U.S. It's okay if people have traveled to the U.S. Um, most a lot of people have. That's not a that's not a problem. You're not you're not discluded from the program. Um, but I would say students who've maybe lived a long period in the U.S. are not as preferred as someone who maybe has a little less experience spending time in the United States. For Canadians, I know it's pretty common for people to go to the U.S. for Disney World or shopping or whatever, and that's totally fine. There's no, there's no, um, there's no problem with that. Great questions. Do feel free to um, include more questions. Oh, I see, I see a lot are coming through in the Q and A chat. Um, so Billy's asking about uh, yes. So the the Youth Ambassadors Program will be virtual this year. Um, so. Uh, and most of the, so the EDUSA Connects Youth Ambassadors, it's all going to be virtual. And many of the pre-college pre programs um, that you hear about are going to be virtual. Um, there might be some of the undergraduate level programming might be in person, but it varies institution to institution. So that's something you can ask each individual presenter today on whether or not the program will be virtual. But across the board for pre-college, it's pretty much all virtual this summer um, with very little exception. If you'd like to learn more about Youth Ambassadors, as I mentioned, you can uh, follow, uh, you can click on the link I, I put up previously, um, and you can also follow us on our social media. I'll go ahead and answer a couple more questions before we introduce our first presenter from Georgetown. Um, so, a question in future years will there potentially be an option to do in person academic programs? Absolutely. Um, the Youth Ambassador Exchange, Education USA Academy, and uh, the folks who are here today are all working towards uh, having in-person programming again uh, once it's safe to do so. So if you're somebody who's looking ahead to 2022, we're hoping that that will be an in-person uh, summer program across the board. But of course, COVID-19 does, you know, that will dictate where we're at by next summer. For sh so Charlene, permanent residents, uh, youth permanent residents haven't been able to apply for youth ambassadors in the past. I suggest you reach out to World Learning directly to ask them that question. Um, we're not, me and my colleagues at Fulbright are not the ones who are the main administrators of the program. It's World Learning. So you can email them. Um, their email is youthambassadors at worldlearning.org. Um, another great question. Um, you will need to include some information. Uh, do we need a resume or special letters? So you will need to include some of your information about your activities as much as you can include about that as possible is a good idea, including any leadership roles that you've had or other community service you've done in the past. Um, and then once you've applied, if you're selected for the interview phase, um, you will need letters of recommendation. As I mentioned, you'll need your school to kind of um, uh, sign off as a support system for you through this program. Um, uh, when will they write back to us once we've applied? I'm not sure yet because the program deadline was extended to the 21st. I'm not sure what the new timeline is. I'm mostly in charge of helping promote the program. I'm not in charge of making selections or, or that process. So um, usually everything takes place within a month of the of the applications being received. Um, it is a pretty extensive process. They do, you know, they screen every student and then there's an interview process as well. All right, oh, we've got a lot more questions. We are at, um, okay, so we are at 320. So I'm going to invite my, uh, in, my colleagues here from uh, Georgetown, uh, Catherine Johnson from Georgetown will be presenting. I'd like to invite her to get uh, on the microphone and camera. And please put all the rest of your questions about youth ambassadors in the Q&A chat, and I will happily answer those questions. Um, and I will hand things over to Catherine. Hi, Catherine. 
Hi, hi, thank you so much for having us, Jenica. Hello to all of you out there in Canada. Um, we are so happy to have you with us today. Uh, my name is Katherine Johnson. I manage the admissions process for all of the summer programs at Georgetown. Um, and we know that this year has been pretty unconventional to say the least. So we really appreciate you being here and are so excited to tell you about the different summer programs we have, whether that is for this summer or for next summer. Um, we do, let's see, we have, if you have any questions at all, um, feel free, like um, she said, to put the questions on the Q&A panel or in the chat. And I think I'll also try to reserve a few minutes at the end of the presentation too to go over any questions if you have any. All right, so. First, I'll just go ahead and tell you a little bit about Georgetown. Uh, we were founded in 1789 in Washington, D.C., and we really were founded on the principle of serious and su sustained discourse among a lot of different people, diverse faiths, cultures, beliefs. Um, we really believe that that promotes intellectual, ethical, spiritual understanding. And we really try to embody this principle in the diversity of our students, our faculty, and our commitment to justice and the common good as well as our intellectual openness and our international character. Um, and then specifically for summer, we offer two types of summer programs. We have summer sessions for visiting undergraduate and graduate students. And then we also have high school sessions for those pre-college students. Um, and those are mostly high school age students. So I'll talk a little bit about both today here. I'll start with summer sessions. Um, we have over 250 courses in a variety of disciplines that are open to visiting students who are at the undergraduate or graduate level. Um, and our summer courses cover all of the same content and meet all of the same learning objectives as their fall and spring versions. So the exact same courses that you would take at Georgetown in the fall or the spring, you'll get through our summer sessions courses as well. Um, many of our courses are online, which really means that you can earn Georgetown summer credits from our Georgetown faculty anywhere in the world, anywhere all over Canada, um, offered during the cross session and six week sessions. Our online courses provide the same academic content as on campus courses, just entirely virtual. And so most of our online courses are asynchronous. There's that word again. So we allow for a little bit more of a flexible time frame for students to listen to lectures and complete their readings and assignments um, on their own time. There are some courses that do have synchronous components where all of the students or small groups of students log on at the same time to participate in a lecture or a discussion or some virtual office hours. Um, our faculty really try to uh, manage that during time zones so that even if students are in different time zones, it'll work for everyone in the course. Um, you can also, we have a kind of a sample of the dis disciplines that we offer here, but that's just a small sample. You can always see the full extent of the courses available, um, both undergraduate and, gra and graduate at our website here at summersessions.georgetown.edu. There you can kind of look through all of the different course subjects we offer and see if there's a good fit for you. Um, and then just to go over a few more of the details for summer sessions, we offer actually seven different sessions that start May 24th and run all the way to August 13th. Um, and students who are not currently enrolled in Georgetown, we call it visiting students. Um, and it is a simple online, free, straightforward process. Uh, all students who are visiting non-degree students do have to complete an enrollment form. Uh, but it's after you submitted that enrollment form, it's quick, it's easy. You'll receive an email within three to five business days or so, and then you'll be able to register for the courses. The letter that you contain contains all of your information, to becoming just like a Georgetown summer student. So you'll get your credentials to log in, to um, have access to all of the online resources we have, and then go ahead and register and pay. We also do have limited scholarship assistance, um, and visiting students are open to apply to our scholarships. We also welcome international students to apply as well. Uh, we announce scholarships um, via email on a rolling basis, and we really encourage so we encourage students if you are seeking scholarship assistance to go ahead and get started on the earlier side um, because we want to make sure on a first come first serve basis that it gets out to everybody who is seeking those 
We do also want to note in the virtual format that some online courses are subject to some geographic el eligibility requirements. We have all those laid out on our website, so feel free and go ahead and take a look. Um, there is a resources section for international students, so you can check there to see if there are any geographic eligibility restrictions that um, apply to online courses. Okay, and then here, if you have any other um, questions, again, you can ask them in the chat here, or feel free to contact us directly. We have all our contact information here. We also encourage you to follow us on all the socials, we have a lot of fun updates, um, things like that. So you can find us on Twitter and Instagram at WeRGUSummer. Um, and then we also have our email address and webpage here. And this is just for summer sessions, which is for um, current college visiting students. Here, I'll leave that there for a minute. And then I'll go on to talk about our pre-college programs. So high school sessions, high school sessions, um, I'll start with a non-credit. This is also, we also have an academy program just like at USA Canada. Um, so this is open to any student who is completing grade eight through grade 12 or stage up. Um, we offer these non-credit programs which are called academies and they are all virtual for summer 2021. Um, next year, summer 2022, if you're looking ahead, just stay tuned. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll be back, back to normal and able to offer some more on-campus courses then, but for summer 2021, it is gonna be all virtual. And these programs, the academies really just allow students to dive deeper into a specific subject while still learning under Georgetown faculty. Um, and just to give you an idea of what the academy experience looks like, they include uh, about four to five hours of synchronous class sessions a day. And this is when all students log on to receive live sessions and instruction. It can include activities like lectures, guest speakers, panels, group discussions, and more. In addition, there is about two to three hours of asynchronous academic material for students to engage with each weekday. And that's content that students would view independently. At times, they're more convenient to you and your schedule. And those would include things like virtual simulations in the medical programs, um, videos and readings to prepare for in-class discussions, research papers, guest speakers, um, presentations, voice threads and reflections and more. Um, and all of the academies, it's important to note, do include social programming um, to give students time to unwind and meet and interact with each other in a less formal setting, which is really great too, because we do have students from all over the world. So you can really get to know people from every corner of the world and and what they're interested in too, and make connections that way. All right, and then we also, another um, section of our high school sessions are our credit programs. Um, and those are also open to current high school students and it gives students the opportunity to earn Georgetown credit while also taking engaging classes with current university students. So our college credit courses um, are really designed to offer academically strong students a wide range of courses, including everything from history, government, um, international relations, math, computer science, photography, foreign languages, the works. Uh, and they are all college level courses. So they're challenging, thought provoking. You will receive a Georgetown credit, things like that. Oh, I'm running out of time. Okay. <laughs> um, and then we also have a five week college prep program. So you can go over, um, take a course and also get um, prepped for college as well. And I'm gonna run down here to the contact information because I don't wanna go over and, and go into another person's time. Um, but I really encourage you to visit our website, summer.georgetown.edu. Again, this is just the um, contact information for our pre-college program. And they have, um, we have lots of fun updates there as well. Um, and the application process, everything like that should be all on there. I'm sorry, we're out of time. But yes. Thank you so much, Catherine. And yes, 10 minutes goes by quickly. So I know. Catherine I is practice. still here, as well as her <laughs> colleague, uh, uh, Justin Fox. And you can ask them questions in the private chat. So yes. please feel free to reach out to them directly um, in the private chat section or the Q&A, and they'll help answer your questions. 
Thank you so much, Catherine. Yes, thank you. Thanks to everybody for joining us. Feel free to reach out with questions. All right, coming up next are our colleagues from Berkeley. This is Justin. Hi, Justin. Hey there, Jenica. Thank you so much for having us. So we're really excited to talk to you all as the rest of my colleagues about the exciting opportunities that you all could take advantage of at our various universities. And so I'm gonna just highlight some of the program offerings that we have at UC Berkeley. For those of you not familiar with Berkeley, just to give you some context. So we are located in California in the San Francisco Bay Area. So we're an hour, hour or so shy of Silicon Valley, home to many popular companies and organizations, everything from Google to Apple to Facebook, Netflix. So that's another amazing draw for a lot of students to get to explore the Silicon Bay Area while they're spending their summer with us. As we want to share with Berkeley, we are a research, a public research university, and it's also reflected in our, our academics as well as our amazing faculty, which you would have the opportunity to study with, to learn from, to learn from their areas of expertise as they'll get to share their knowledge, share their expertise with you in a variety of different academic disciplines that I will highlight in our next few slides. So, I'm going to start off by talking about our pre-college scholars program and our pre-college scholars program is an opportunity for continuing high school students to take academic courses with us during the summer. These are all for academic credit. So at the end of the summer, you would get a Berkeley transcript. Now, one thing I do want to note about this upcoming summer for all of our academic courses, they're going to be offered virtually. We do hope, however, things change and for summer 22, we're able, to re we're able to have students return to us back on campus. With our pre-college scholars program, currently with the virtual track, you would get to choose from over 200, I think 300 academic courses in a wide variety of different disciplines from computer science to natural science to arts, engineering, the, the, the business, humanities. There's a wide range of different academic courses that you could choose from. In addition to that, we also offer a great series of workshops, college exploration and admissions workshops. So you can learn too about just for yourself, what kind of university do you wanna study at? Or what are some other things to keep in mind as you, if you're interested in preparing for applying to Berkeley, things that you would need to know for like your college application and your essay. We have some great workshops to, to help you engage in that exploration. Additionally, we know for a lot of our students, Getting to build community is very important during the summer. So we also offer a wide variety of different community building and social activities for students to get to know other participants in the program. We have a great group of student ambassadors who are past participants that also serve as mentors to our, to our students during the summer. So you'll get to experience all that and so much more. Just so you all know eligibility wise, students in this program that apply must be 16 years of age by the program start date which is in June, you have to have completed two years of high school, 3.0 GPA, and other ways that you could find out more about our program is by visiting our Instagram page or exploring more on our, on our website. And just to give uh, some information just about costs and the next steps. So for our program, it is a $550 unit fee. Typically most students take one course, which is about three or four units. And then the, the additional fee is related to, you get unlimited transcripts, access to all of our different services that we offer and from the Student Learning Center to our library, the advising support and much more. And application is currently open for the program through June. However, all classes are first come first serve. And if you apply in good time, complete the online application, answer the two short essay questions and provide your transcript, you should hear back from us within five to seven business days. And then from there, you would get the next steps on how to register and enroll in your classes. So the next portion that I wanna talk about is our summer sessions. So summer sessions at Berkeley is kind of thought of as the third semester where our campus is open to all visitors, including high school students, but including anyone who's graduated from high school. What's great about this, students pay no out-of-state tuition, there's no international student service fee for this upcoming summer. So it's an, once again, a great way to engage in an academic experience. 
or for many students to earn some credit that they could then transfer back to their, to their university. With our summer session, similar to pre-college, we provide a lot of opportunities for students to engage outside the classroom. We're gonna have a mentoring program too for our visiting students that, that take part in our program. Also, we're gonna do a lot of programming around career development as well as health and wellness. And it's once again gonna serve as a way for you to not only get an academic experience, but really a extracurricular and co-curricular experience too that we know our students who did our program last year found extremely valuable. Here are just some information about the cost of that program, very similar to our pre-college program. All students at the completion of their summer would get a transcript from Berkeley and have unlimited access to request additional transcripts. And then there is no English language proficiency requirement from students from, from Canada. And it's just an online application. There's no need for letters of recommendation for, for students that apply. And there's no essay portion to our visiting student application as well. So I just wanted to cover those and provide you all with contact information of once again to how to find us. My colleague, Ibrahim Nasher, he is our pre-college coordinator. So he would really be the one that's gonna be greeting you and welcoming you this summer to an amazing experience if you do our high school program. And then we have a great student services team that supports all the visiting students taking advantage of our summer sessions. So once again, if you do have any questions, feel free to, to, to ask them and I'll be here with my colleagues to, to answer your questions later on as well. So thank you. Well, thank you, Justin. Um, there was a question earlier and I'm not sure um, if this is relevant to you. Uh, the student asks, um, would the summer, during the summer sessions, um, it's mentioned extracurricular activities. Um, it's kind of hard to understand the question. Um, do you help with the application process in the in the summer sessions? So um, maybe you can mention if that's relevant to Berkeley's summer sessions or not. Gotcha. If I understand the and uh, the question correctly, Jenica, are they asking if we provide any support with the like the university application? I think so. Yeah. Okay. If that is the question that we do, we actually have a colleague from the Berkeley admissions office that does a presentation during the summer about the college application and essay admissions process for Berkeley or any of the UCs. Mm -hmm. And that's actually one of our most popular workshops that, that students have the opportunity to attend. And Nikita is asking for credit programs under a particular price point. Um, you can speak to if that's something you have at your institution. Uh, let's see here. It's in the public chat. Yeah, I can copy it over. Okay. She's asking, can you offer any credit program with a cost under $2,800? Very specific. <laughs> oh, let's see here. Well, here's the thing. With our, I'll say, with our unit price, it's $550 per unit. So you can find a two-unit course, some even mm -hmm. one-unit courses. So there's a, a wide variety that you could choose from based on whatever your, your budget may be. Excellent. And then in Q&A uh, for Berkeley, would we be able to apply if we were turning 16 or summer, uh, I guess during the summer, or would we have to wait till the next year? I guess, when is your cutoff for the age <laughs> requirement? That is a great question. So unfortunately, students do have to be 16 years of age for this summer by June 20th. So if you are, unfortunately, if you have a late birthday and you turn say 16 during the summer, you wouldn't be eligible for our program. However, there are other programs offered in from different departments that we could support you in getting connected to. For example, there's an academic talent development program that's also very popular for students that don't meet our age requirement. Very cool. Yeah, and I think one thing that folks can learn from the session is that uh, there's a lot of different departments that can offer um, pre-college or summer programs. And so that's great, Justin, that you can help students find something that's right for them. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. And I'll bring up the poll if you'd like to learn more. Um, and would you like Justin to follow up with you? You can say yes to the poll I just brought up. You can also keep communicating with him in the private chat. So please ask more questions if you're interested in Berkeley. He's here to help you. Thank you so much. Thank you all so much. 
I'll also bring up the pop-up for UC Berkeley as our friends from UCLA jump on to join. There we go. So coming up next, we have Howard from UCLA, followed by Syracuse Temple and University of Wisconsin in Madison. All right, Howard, uh, let me know if you're having any trouble getting connected. So um, as you all registered, some of you indicated that you wanted to hear back from every university that's here today. Um, if you're somebody who selected no, the reason I'm bringing up those polls is an opportunity for you to select which schools uh, you hear back from. So when you uh, say yes in one of those polls, you're giving permission to that institution to contact you uh, and give you more information about their programming. Hey, Howard, it looks like your microphone's on. Yes, I think, right. uh, can you hear me? I can. Okay, you can perfect. Go ahead. Okay, great. Well, greetings everyone from Los Angeles. Uh, greetings to our uh, neighbors to the north here in Canada. It's always a pleasure to speak with you. My name is Howard. I'm uh, one of the staff members here at the UCLA Summer Sessions office, and we basically take care of um, anything that's related to summer, whether it's courses or institutes or um, academic credit here at UCLA. And so I'm really happy to uh, connect with you and tell you a little bit about our programs. So just to start off, a little bit of uh, background information on UCLA on the left there, you can kind of see maybe our mission statement, I would describe it, kind of distilled down to um, uh, five words here and uh, two accolades that I want to draw your attention to here at UCLA. The first, of course, is that we were uh, have been uh, for several years now ranked the number one public university in the US um, by US News. And uh, as further affirmation of that, uh, that accolade, we are also the most applied to undergraduate university in the United States with about, uh, I believe the, the number this year uh, for fall uh, of 2021 was uh, 140,000 undergraduate applications. So um, it's definitely a popular university. And in researching this session, I was talking to some of our colleagues over at admissions and uh, UCLA is the 11th most popular uh, university for Canadian students to apply to. So um, even then, uh, I found out that we only have about 300 Canadian students, uh, fully matriculated uh, Canadian students. So kind of uh, our mission here today is to get you interested in UCLA. Uh, hopefully uh, this session will interest you in our summer sessions and then attending our summer sessions will hopefully uh, interest you in uh, applying to UCLA as a full-time student, whether you finish for high school and wanna come here for your undergraduate degree or perhaps uh, if you're already an undergraduate student, you know, please consider coming to us for a variety of graduate and PhD programs. So some things that you can study with us, or actually, sorry, I had inserted one slide here just to let you know what kind of students study with us during the summer. So you can see we have about you know, 15, uh, 16,000 students uh, studying with us in the summer in an average summer. Um, and of course, this data was from uh, 2019 before the entire coronavirus situation uh, happened. Uh, but we typically have about 11 to 12,000 UCLA students uh, just taking summer sessions, trying to get ahead, trying to knock out some of those graduation requirements. And then that yellow slice there, we typically have about 4,000 uh, visiting students, including international and domestic, uh, including high school and uh, college students studying with us in the summer. So it's really a great opportunity, like Jenica said, to network with peers, to uh, kind of find out what the UC and the American college experience is all about, and just to have a really great time. Uh, LA in the summertime is, is a very magical time. Uh, we are located in Westwood, which is a neighborhood in West LA, and just about uh, five or 10 minutes away from the beach. So it's a fantastic experience altogether. Um, like many of my other colleagues that have gone before have mentioned, um, you know, due to the health and safety protocols, uh, UCLA for visiting students will be 100% virtual this year. So we hope you can understand. Um, in many ways, this is going to be a, 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 a bonus for a lot of students because they won't have to travel to camp campus, but still be able to experience all the wonderful courses that UCLA uh, offers uh, through an online arena. So um, we, as as many of the other uh, representatives said, we're hoping to get back to a more normal environment in 2022, but for this summer, all of our programs are virtual. 
So the programs that we have available, the most popular one is just called Academic Courses. And this is available for both pre-college and college students, as well as working professionals. So if you've graduated from university and you won't still want to come take a course here at UCLA, you're perfectly welcome to. We split these into session A, which is uh, the earlier part of summer, and session C, which is the latter part. So added together, we have about six or 700 courses offered between the two sessions. Um, if you're a high school student, you do need to be 15 years or older on that first day of class. So June 21st or uh, August 2nd for session C. And we do have some course limitations. So if you're a college student or you're a uh, working professional that's already finished their college degree, um, pretty much the entire catalog, save some very advanced courses are open for you. But if you're a high school student, we've kind of distilled that list down to about 100 courses that we feel are more suitable for the pre-college population. And the schedule is live now. So all of these courses are regular UCLA courses taken alongside of actual UCLA students. And when you finish, you will get a UCLA transcript as well as official UCLA credit. So um, it's a great way to get uh, a lot of credit knocked out if you're thinking about coming to UCLA or another UC for uh, college. And also, um, you know, typically most of the credits that you earn here will be able to transfer to other universities in the US as well. We also have a shorter program uh, that's designed for students that uh, may be busier. So um, these three week summer intensive studies courses will allow you to be uh, you know, done uh, with the same amount of credit uh, in, in just about half the time. So you can see there, the courses are a little bit limited at this point in terms of subject matter, because it's a new program that we're developing. But um, if you have a only a, a, you know, limited window of time or you have other plans for your summer, these are a great opportunity. Uh, one thing I wanna highlight is if you're into learning foreign languages, uh, our foreign languages departments are completely online with this model. So you can actually take a year long series uh, of foreign language within a nine, uh, a nine week session. Uh, so for example, if I wanted to take Japanese this summer, I could take Japanese 1A, 1B and 1C within a nine week session. And that typically is uh, the first year for, for freshman Japanese. So you can finish what would uh, normally take UCLA students a, an academic year. You can finish that within nine weeks and, and uh, take away a lot of credit if you have uh, time to dedicate for the entire summer. We also have summer institutes. So these are a great option for high school students that want a more curated experience. So you can see they're organized by topic. Um, what the difference is here is that these programs still offer credit courses. However, they pair those credit courses with uh, co-curricular activities in that same field. So to give a more, uh, you know, a real example, um, if you take our musical theater program, you'll be taking classes in acting and things like that. However, during the uh, off hours where you're not attending lectures, you'll actually be participating in a musical production. Um, and you know, some students may be wondering, well, how does that happen you know, with, uh, with the virtual environment? Um, I, I would say that one of the silver linings to this whole pandemic situation is that people have gotten very creative. So last, year partic last year's participants, which was always uh, also a virtual situation, actually came up with a wonderful um, musical theater uh, production. So these are summer institutes if you're interested in uh, a more curated program. And the last program I wanna mention is called Summer College Immersion, or we call it SKIP. Um, and this is basically for uh, exceptional high school students who really are interested in um, getting a head start and perhaps uh, are wanting to attend UCLA in the future. So it's for rising high school juniors and seniors, so 11th or 12th grade. And in addition to learning, uh, you know, classroom learning, uh, being able to pick one or two classes that uh, uh, you can choose, there's also uh, a curated set of co-curricular activities such as a college 101 workshop, so our admissions director will come and give lectures about what they're looking for in UCLA student, and also some public speaking and things that generally will help you be successful at UCLA and also at uh, other highly ranked universities throughout the US. So that's a summary of our programs. I have some fees here for you, um, unit fees as well as summer institutes. If you want a specific calculation on our fees, we have a specific website where you can just put in the number of units you wanna take and it will actually spit out a fee for you. So that's very convenient. And uh, so uh, that's the end of my presentation. Uh, if you wanna go ahead and send me an email uh, through that info inbox or follow us on the various social media, I'll also be on here with the Q and A. So feel free to send me a private message and I'll make sure to get back to you. Thank you so much, Howard. Um, 
and I see that there's a Q and A, a question waiting for you. Uh, so do feel free if you just have one question, you can throw it in Q and A, and you'll get an answer. If you want to keep the conversation going, do feel free to use that private chat function and ask your questions. We're now halfway through our uh, our guest speakers today and we will now be hearing from Syracuse just waiting for our colleague to jump on from there hi Chris hello thanks for having us today thanks for being here yeah it's a pleasure okay so welcome everyone my name is Chris Kofer I'm the executive director of the office free college programs and I'm joined here by my colleague Gianna who's going to be monitoring the chat and helping out and we look forward to sharing it about what we do. Uh, so we have um, Syracuse University. We are in central New York. We have 1,500, uh, 15,000 undergrads. We have 13 schools and colleges, over 200 majors and 100 minors. We also have online degrees and certificates and uh, five award-winning study abroad centers uh, around the world. Uh, we are, um, and then that's, we wanted to show something unique for us. Our mascot is Otto the Orange. Now we're gonna talk about our pre-college programs. We're not representing summer sessions for undergraduate students, but we do have pre-college programs. We're going into our 61st year of pre-college programs. Uh, like last summer, we were residential canceled um, and we are canceled again for this summer. So we'll be online. Uh, we did have fantastic success and the students raved about their experiences online with us last summer. Uh, we do have over 70 courses offered this summer. Most are non-credit, but many are credit as well. Um, and we de-emphasize the credits. Yes, they're great, but it's really about the experience and the personal growth and what you get out of your course, whether it's credit or non-credit. Uh, and we're going to talk about it. We also have an accelerated semester online, uh, which is in the fall and spring, which we talked very briefly about as well. Uh, but again, as you've know, noticed, we have to go very quickly here as our time is very limited. So uh, I'm going to skip a lot of this here because Jenna could talk about this at the very beginning of the presentation, which is great. She kind of covered it for all of us, but it's about gaining exposure, acquisition of new knowledge, developing new skills, uh, meeting new friends from across the country and around the world. Uh, that have similar interests and passions than you. Uh, and um, so all that's great. And uh, our application deadline is May 15th. So we do have uh, 70, 70 plus different courses and they're in these major subject areas. And they come from 10 of our undergraduate schools and colleges. Many of our schools and colleges are professional schools. So you're gonna dive right into learning skills that would lead to uh, development towards uh, you know, different kinds of career paths. So not only do you get exposure to various college majors, but you also get insight into careers that, uh, that, can, that would be ahead in your future. So lots of great things to explore there. And um, we do uh, recommend you go to our website to see the full listing of courses. We dedicate a full web page with a ton of detail for every course that we offer. So you know that you're, you're getting matched with something that you're truly interested in. And, uh, uh, and we encourage you to reach out to us if you have any questions that you have about any of our courses. So a typical day. So you've noticed there's been different types of programs and courses that are discussed through this whole online environment. And some of them are very intensive. When, when we have our residential uh, program, we are also very intensive uh, in that students are studying minimum six and up to 10 hours a day in their subject area uh, with labs and study groups and projects and, and studios and all of this stuff. So when we went online, we decided that really we wanted to cut down on the daily contact time, stretch out instead of two weeks to be three weeks, because we know you're at home and you have a life. So that way you could still take a class, but also do the other things you're going to do when you're at home, because you're not totally immersed on our campus. So it's, so we, we changed the way we offer our courses. So we typically, and again, typically with a big asterisk, because all our courses are very unique, a 1.5 hours per day, Monday through Friday, uh, for a three-week course of synchronous live class time. Some have a little more, some have a lot more, but most of them are about an hour and a half. Uh, and then you have asynchronous classwork. Now that could be, um, it could be one and a half hours, two hours, three hours. Now, when, when we say approximately 10 to 12 hours per week, again, there's two big variables there that you need to consider. One is the individual course. And if you contact us, we could give you some idea of how much that faculty adds to the asynchronous content versus uh, probably, you know, potentially another faculty who adds a little less. But the other piece is about you. You know, when I see that uh, faculty says, oh, you're going you're to do two hours of homework tonight. For me as a student, that would mean I, I knew about me and that that would mean three hours for me. 
Now, my oldest daughter, she's a senior in college right now. If she saw, if she had a faculty member tell her two hours, she'd know that she could do that in an hour. So again, you gotta under, you gotta know yourself a little bit when it comes to this. So, so that's the basic layout of the day. Our six-week courses typically meet twice a week, where our three-week courses meet uh, five days a week. Again, not all of them, but most of them. And then we have tons of stuff that happens outside of um, outside of the the classroom environment because we are creating a a college community and uh, where you're making friends and meeting people from outside of your class and you're engaged in these really fun events and winning prizes that we're sending to you at home and all sorts of stuff. We'll talk more about that in a minute. In fact, here it is in a minute. So you'll see on this, this slide some of the various things that we do. Now, when you become a student in summer college, you are a Syracuse University student. You're not matriculated for a degree, but you are a student. Therefore, you have access to all the services and resources available to Syracuse University students. So you see that resume building workshop. We bring in staff, professional staff from our uh, career services office to work with you to help develop resume and the do's and don'ts of resume building. We have admission staff hosting presentations, not just about what it is to, to apply to SU, but what it is to find fit and do's and don'ts in interviews and you know great things, you know the do's and don'ts in essays and all these things. And there are professional admissions advisors you have access to all of those. And then for subject specific areas, we have the individual school college recruiters. So if you're interested in engineering, we get our friend Jonathan to come over and he talks all about not just engineering at Syracuse, but also engineering the undergraduate environment and engineering across a lot of different types of institutions, again, to provide great insight. And then there's the fun stuff, trivia nights, meet the pets, that's a hilarious one, game nights, esports tournaments, uh, competitions, and then yeah, we even bring financial aid for financial literacy. So a lot of a lot of fun things and also a lot of great resource uh, things and, and more. This is just a few examples. So where our students come from, we have, you know, we're not as big as, we're not as, big as Berkeley and some of the other ones out there, but, but uh, we do have a wonderful community where students get to know each other really well. And we've had 3,000 students in the last, uh, uh, you know, five years come representing 54 states, or sorry, 54 countries and 45 states. Um, and so, so students really do get to meet friends, make new friends uh, from around the world. And then because of all the modern technology these days, you guys are all staying connected. Um, uh, with each other via the social media and all that. So it's great. Okay, really briefly, Accelerated Semester Online. If you have capacity during the academic year and you want to take some college classes now, now these are highly developed, fully professionally developed online courses that are that take 10 months to build. Uh, and then we offer them in two fall, se two fall eight week sessions and two separate fall, uh, spring eight week sessions where you can pick a course uh, and you're working on about eight to 10 hours, again, know yourself, uh, of work outside of the synchronous class time. But what is kind of unique about our online courses is that they have one 90 minute virtual class per week. So you do have that sense of community. There's a lot of online classes you could take out there. And a lot of them, you know, as a part of Coursera or LinkedIn or whatever. And a lot of those are mostly asynchronous. So you're doing it completely on your own. So with these, you do have that classroom environment where you can ask questions, engage in dialogue and so on and so forth. Um, but we've got a nice little variety of courses in that that change in every, every one of the terms. So if you want to build up your resume and get some credits under your belt uh, before you graduate high school, then this is a great option for you as well. This does not have the kind of community that I mentioned here. This is a fully fleshed out experience with academic, uh, a, a virtual community that's built. The, uh, the accelerated semester is, it doesn't really have that as much. So I want to talk briefly about success. So we've been tracking our students, of course, all these years. I've been I've been here for uh, going on 14 years. Uh, the program has been around for 61 years. I may have mentioned that. Now, 98% of our alumni say that their experience in our in our courses helped them uh, be successful. Uh, and uh, prepare them for college. And then 97% of our uh, alums uh, have either earned or in the process of earning their bachelor's degree. And then the last bit there is to show where some of our alums are working. You know, they've got great jobs that are out there in the world and they're being successful. And we hope that they, through their summer college and undergraduate experience, they're doing something that they're really passionate about. So that's it. If you have any questions, please contact us. Jenica uh, will kind of do that whole thing again. Thank you so much. And we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much, uh, Chris and uh, Gianna, for being here today. 
and for the information. Uh, those of you who want to know more about Syracuse, please send them private messages. Um, they'll both be very happy to um, to give you more information about Syracuse. Um, I do want to mention that Johns Hopkins, unfortunately, was unable to make it today. They were originally scheduled for 4 o'clock. If you want to learn more about their programming, please go to the website I just put in the chat area. Um, or you can follow up with me to get email addresses to ask more questions to their team. We're going to move along to Temple University. Uh, just waiting for our colleagues to jump on from there. We're going to speak. Uh, Maureen's going to tell us more about Temple's opportunities. Uh, as we're waiting, hopefully you've been clicking around on the polls and in the handouts area. Um, you can download some of the materials that I included from Youth Ambassadors um, and EdUSA Summer um, Connects. Um, you can also find some handouts from some of our other participants today. Uh, Syracuse did include a handout in there that you can uh, that you can download or click to. And uh, Maureen, are you, just let me know if you're having trouble connecting. Um, let me see if I can turn that camera on. There we go. There you go. All Hi. right. <laughs> All right. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for having me here today. My name is Maureen, um, and I am representing Temple University's pre-college programs. Um, and so I'm excited to tell you a little bit more about us. Um, so if you are not familiar with Temple University, we are located in Philadelphia, um, in Pennsylvania. So birthplace of the U.S., birthplace of gritty, equal importance, I would say, at this point. Um, so we're located um, on Broad Street. That's where we have big races every year. That's where we do our parades when we actually win sports, uh, um, football, baseball, hockey, etc. cetera. Um, we're located in Philly. We are proud to be from Philly, but we also are excited about the fact that we do have campuses in Rome and Tokyo as well. So many Temple students are getting a truly global experience. Um, we've been around for a while, since 1884, um, and we're a large institution with about 30,000 undergraduate students spread across 17 schools and colleges and 150 plus undergraduate majors. Uh, and so, we don't have 150 pre-college programs, but really the goal of our pre-college programs are to introduce students to some of the academic fields of study um, that are available to you as an undergraduate student at Temple. And so what I'm excited to share with you today is a little bit of information about our interdisciplinary programs where you can really customize and mix and match suited to your interests, but also some specialty programs in art, design, um, and media and communication. But generally speaking, all of our programs are academic programs for students as young as going into ninth grade and as old as going into 12th grade. So I'm not here. We do have summer classes available for current university students. Um, and if there are questions about that, I'm happy to address that in the chat later. But the focus of this conversation will really be programs for high school students. Um, all of our programs are based in project-based learning. Um, and what that means is you will be working on real world application of knowledge and skills that you learn in the classroom uh, as part of your pre-college program. Um, and part of the reason we do that is because it does help students meet each other. Um, and it does, we do believe it helps students learn better, but Temple University is really about real world education um, and making a difference in the world as soon as possible. And so our pre-college curriculum in that sense mirrors our undergraduate curriculum. Um, many of our students are like, I just want to get out there and do what I love as soon as possible. Um, and pre-college programs mirrors that. We want you to get to apply what you learn as quickly as you possibly can, including in our short-term pre-college programs. Um, and so like a lot of my colleagues have already shared about their programs, we are not different in the sense that we will be online this year as well due to coronavirus. Um, however, typically, um, so if you are thinking about this as an option for next year, typically we do offer an on-campus experience with housing available. Um, so you do get to live in Philadelphia for the summer um, 
and it's a ton of fun. Um, but this year we're online only. We will find ways to introduce you to the city um, and to each other as creatively as we can in the online space. Um, so I want to just talk briefly about, I'm not going to read the whole list to you, but we've got a list of some of the fields of study that are available to you um, as a pre-college student. Uh, and so, like I said before, we've got 17 schools and colleges. Most of them are represented here with some of the workshops and classes that are being offered. So no matter what you're interested in, you will be able to find something to do at Temple that will engage those interests directly. So first I wanna just talk a little bit about our interdisciplinary programs. So these are those mix and match programs that I mentioned at the beginning of my conversation with you all. Um, our interdisciplinary programs are customizable. They allow you to tailor the programs and what you do over the summer to your specific academic interests. Um, and they're staggered in terms of how long you want to be involved and kind of what your primary goals are. So on the front end, we've got pre-college workshops. It's a two week program that's offered three times throughout the summer. And you, you're not earning college credit, but you are immersing yourself in two non-credit workshops in 30, you have 30 choices, about 30 choices um, of classes to take. Um, so this program does not require an application. You go on our website, you make your deposit, you pick your classes and you're in. Um, and so we offer that again three times. The sessions, uh, the workshops available in each session are a little bit different. Um, and so I would encourage you if you're interested to get in early because some of these classes do fill up pretty quickly. If you are looking more to earn college credit and really get a sense of what a college class might be like, the Summer Academy or Summer Scholars programs are really good options for you. You do need to be a little bit older because college credit is involved. So you do need to be entering grades 11 or 12 next year. Um, and you do need to be prepared to be academically engaged for a little bit longer, either four weeks or six weeks, depending on the program you choose. The major difference between Summer Academy and Summer Scholars is the amount of credit that you're earning and also the sense of being part of a cohort. And what I mean by that is Summer Academy, you're earning one college, you're earning three or four college credits, so one course. And we curate a really short list of about four courses to choose from. And so we're ensuring that you are going to be with other, primarily with other high school students. And you'll supplement that academic work in the college classroom with two non-credit workshops from the pre-college workshop selection. So if you're like, I kind of just want to try this out and be with other high school students, but still get that college credit. Summer Academy is a great program for you. It's four weeks long. And we worked out a deal with our undergraduate admissions department where if you pass that college course with a B or better, our undergraduate admissions department believes in the program so much that they will give you $1,000 a year for four years off of your undergraduate tuition, just right off the bat. So it's nice going, nice finishing the program knowing that you've already got some money off of your undergraduate application available to you um, should you choose to come to Temple. For students who want the really, really rigorous kind of all summer long academic experience, Summer Scholars is the right program. It's very customizable. You're picking two college courses from our broader undergraduate catalog. Um, you're having one-on-one -on -one advising sessions with program staff to make sure that you're choosing the right courses for you and that they are meeting some of your academic goals. Um, but Summer Scholars, because it's so customizable, you might be one of the only high school students in your class, if not the only high school student. So some people are like, oh, I kind of want to meet other people. That might not be the right thing for me. Um, other people are like, I just want to get into what I'm interested in. So these are the interdisciplinary programs. Again, mix and match depending on what you are most interested in. Super customizable, picking and choosing from programs off of or subjects off of this list here. However, we do have some specialty programs available in our Tyler School of Art and Architecture and our Klein College of Media and Communications. So I placed them here um, for you to take a look at as well. Um, and so if you are someone who is seriously considering going to art school or maybe wants to become an architect, 
the Tyler School is a great place for you this summer. All of the four programs that you see here under art and architecture are two weeks long, non-credit. However, you can mix and match in pre-college summer studios depending on what kind of fine art you're most interested in. Um, and all the others you can see are a little bit more specialized depending on what areas of art and design you're most interested in. Media and communication, same thing, mostly journalism, um, but different aspects of journalism depending on your interests. Um, and then most programs, I know we're running out of time, but most programs do not require an application. Um, the only ones that require an application are the ones where credit is available. Financial aid is available for all of these programs, including for international students. Um, and you could just email pre-college at temple.edu to get that application. Um, and I'll drop off by leaving my contact information here um, and our social media channels as well. But I'm happy to answer any questions in the chat if you have them. And thanks again for having me today. Thank you so much, Maureen, and thanks for the information. Please uh, continue to follow up with Maureen in the private chat. She's happy to stick around and answer your questions. We're moving into the final part of our program where our colleagues from Wisconsin are going to join us. Uh, we have Jing from the University of Wisconsin in Madison, who's going to tell us about one of their very specific pre-college uh, summer programs. Hi, Danica. Hi, I can hear you and I can see you. <laughs> Great. Um, hi, everyone. I'm really happy to be here today to share with you the pre-college programs here at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. So my name is Jing and I work with the Visiting International Student Program here at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. First of all, do you all know where we're located? So we're in the Midwest of the US and we're about two and a half hours away from Chicago. And um, so to tell you a little bit about the university, um, so we all believe in the Wisconsin idea, which is that education should influence people's lives beyond the boundary of the classroom. And that means the education you get from the university should help improve the lives of everyone in the state, in the country, and the world. Um, the picture on the right shows a photo from one of our football games in the fall where tens of thousands of people attend this event. It's a huge event every year um, prior to the pandemic, um, where in the third quarter, uh, we call it the jump around, when everybody gets up and jump around, it's said that it causes a mini earthquake. And um, I was fortunate enough to be um, a part of this event back in 2019. So it was, it was a really interesting experience um, being a part of the uh, football event. So to show you a little bit about what it's like on campus, these are some of the activities you can do. Um, starting from the top left-hand corner, you can take a dive right into our famous Lake Mendota here on campus or do some rock climbing in the Union South, um, or you can buy some fresh fruits and vegetables at the farmer's market and play sports around the campus with your friends. Um, and here in the, in the photo where you kind of see our state capitol in the background, this is called the Library Mall where there are lots of uh, food carts lined every day and they're, from, they're food from all the different places in the world where you can buy your favorite food here at one of the food carts. And the last photo shows a, uh, shows a photo from our Memorial Union's Union Terrace, which is a truly beautiful place where we have lots of iconic, colorful chairs and tables, and it's a great place to relax with your friends on an afternoon in a spring or summer day. So now I'm going to tell you a little bit about one of the pre-college programs we're offering this summer called the ACE Digital Storytelling. So this program, in this program, you will produce a portfolio of videos with compelling narratives and visuals to demonstrate your storytelling skills while learning from digital media faculty and experts at UW-Madison. Um, as more and more universities and colleges in the U.S. are accepting video as part of the college application, this program will really help you strengthen 
your video part of your college application. Um, and you will get to try out different styles. You will get to try what's an inspirational um, storytelling, how to do how to do something that is persuasive or informative. And you will get to meet peers from around the world because we are promoting this programs in many different regions in the world. And we're offering two sessions to accommodate um, the needs of students from different regions because of time difference. And at the end of the program, you will receive a certificate of completion from the UW-Madison. And for students who, um, who ask for recommendation letters, that's something we can work with you on as well if you um, do an excellent work in this program. So this is what a sample one week schedule is like. Um, so throughout the program, so it, it is a three week program and um, with 30 hours of um, live activities and classes. So each week you will have 10 hours dedicated to this program. And each week you'll get to work on enhancing your script, um, having digital media workshops where you will get to create and edit your videos. So improving your video creation editing skills. And you will also get to interact with current UW-Madison students um, and also local high school students in panels and um, what we called games night, where you will get to play lots of games online like scavenger hunt um, and you know, drawing stuff and having other people guess what it is. Uh, I think it's called Pictionary. Um, and you will also get to learn more in depth about the UW-Madison admissions process and requirements if you're interested in applying to the university. Um, and who should attend this program? If you're an international student between the ages of 14 to 18 with intermediate or, or advanced English skills, which I'm sure most of you um, probably do, you, um, this might be a great program for you. And last but not least, I'll share some of the university numbers with you. So at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, we have over 20 Nobel Prize laureates and we're ranked number 13 the U.S. Public University, as well as number 25 in the World University of Kings. And here on campus, it, it is a huge campus and very diverse. We have over 45,000 um, students from over 130 countries. And if you're interested to learn more about the digital storytelling program, please visit our website down here. And it's also going to show up in the pop-up. Um, and before I wrap up, I do want to share with you a couple of other uh, pre-college programs here with you. Um, so one of them is called the Accelerated Learning Program, where it is an intense three-week summer camp designed to push you to the next academic level, where you will get to enroll in a single course for an in-depth experience. And um, another program, if you're a musician, we have a program called the Summer Music Clinic, uh, where this year we have a three-day intensive online experience to help grow you as musicians in this program. Um, and two other programs we offer are called Badger Summer Scholars and Badger Pre-College Online. If you're interested to learn any of these programs, please visit, visit the handouts area um, or type in here the website that's precollege.wisc.edu to learn more about these programs. And I am going to leave you with my, um, my email here in the chat if you have any questions about the programs that we are offering this summer. Um, and yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing from you and to answer any questions you have. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jing. Um, and uh, I love learning about the digital storytelling program. It seems like a very cool opportunity. So that will wrap up our program for today. We do still have most of our reps in the room. So even though the presentation is over, please still send your private chat questions to our uh, representatives. I'm gonna keep the room open for 10 more minutes so that you can do so. Um, 
We have Syracuse, University of California, Berkeley, Temple, UCLA, and University of Wisconsin-Madison. So uh, if you go into the private chat area, you can select the person from that institution. You can ask them questions about their summer programs. I will also be here for 10 more minutes. So if you have questions about EdUSA uh, Connects or Youth Ambassadors, do feel free to ask those questions. And of course, you can get in touch with Education USA in all these different ways. There's my website, the email, um, and all the social media things. Um, I will throw my Instagram up one more time in case you missed it earlier. Thank you so much for your participation today. And as mentioned earlier, everybody who registered will receive the recording. So if you miss anything or just want to uh, go back and get more of the information, you will be able to do so that way. I believe I put up the poll and the pop-up. Great. Thank you so much, everybody. And I hope you have an excellent day. Bye.